Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the latest edition of the Jake's Take with Jacob Elliott podcast. I'm your host, Jacob Elliott the chief content producer and writer of Jake'sTake.com, a pop culture entertainment news website. If you're watching this on YouTube, please give us five star rating and please give us subscribe and hit and thumbs up it, please. If you're listening to this on our audio platforms, five star rating, subscribe to the podcast and download additional episodes after you've listened to this interview. I am honored and privileged to welcome an OG in this house. He started, well, many people recognize him from his career start on Real World Hawaii. Next, he was on Extreme Challenge 2000, representing Real World. Now, after the Real World, he appeared on numerous TV shows such as Friends, The Hughleys, NCIS, and The Parkers. He also appeared in several films such as National Lampoon's Van Wilder and First Drop. First daughter. He also hosted MTV's daily hip hop show, Direct Effect, and the Cartoon Network revival of Hole in the Wall. And he's also recently, more recently, returned to the challenge, participated in two, the first two seasons of All Challenge All Stars, where he plays four in the second season. And he's also a talented stand up comedian. So please help me welcome and a true icon to come to the podcast. Yeah, dang, man. Wow. Go ahead, Jacob. Man, you made me feel like, man, you made me feel like a star, brother. Thank you. I didn't know I did all that stuff. Appreciate you, man. <laughs> uh, it is an honor to have you, Tech. It is a privilege. So, guys, Tech and I met at Challenge Mania Laugh in Kansas City. So, I want to give a big shout out to my friends, Scott Yeager and Derek Kaczynski. Thank you so much for bringing Challenge Mania to Kansas City. And, Tech, it was a pleasure. You made me laugh, my friend. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, Scott and Derek, man. Well, yeah, like you said, shout out to Scott and Derek for uh, putting this thing together, for uh, taking us um, challenges on the road. Uh, they really do a, a great job with their podcast and with their uh, live events. So shout out to Derek and Scott. Keep it going. Keep me on the road. I love it. I'm having a good time. And I meet people like you, Jacob. So, you know, cheers. Cheers to them. Cheers to them. Cheers to them. And cheers, cheers Scott and Derek. And thank you so much for being all, my honorary older brother mentors when it comes to the podcasting world. Right. He's a good dude. Like I said, he's a real good guy, man. Very funny, too. I like doing the challenge uh, when we do the uh, the comedy shows. It's very, it's a real good time. I like it. Awesome. So, Tech, when did you get interested in performing, and how did that passion involve the desire to pursue a career in the entertainment industry? Um, It's funny. Good question. So, um, entertaining, I think um, – I think I had been entertaining since I was probably like in like kindergarten doing stuff, you know what I mean? Like plays and stuff. But I remember I was in like third grade and I was at my mother's, uh, she worked for Equitable and I was at my mother's Christmas party. And this is back when breakdancing was like really, really like popular. This is like 80 something, right? So I had on my little breakdancing gear and I had on my shoes, which I hated. I wanted, I had like church shoes, but I wanted some tennis shoes. But anyway, so the breakers were out there breaking, and then I had just busting my moves. And, they, and my mom was like, she didn't know I could dance, you know what I'm saying? So I got out there busting my breakdance move, and everybody was like, Vera, that's your son? Oh, my God. And then that feeling of that day in third grade, I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. So I would probably say uh, at my mother's equitable party when I was breakdancing in third grade is when I kind of got the bug to perform, you know? I stepped out. I, ju I jumped out on the dance floor, and it was just like, oh, I like this reaction. I like this feeling. So after that, you know? It's been doing it ever since. It's incredible because I've done to a lot of bar mitzvah dances and school dances, and I love to get down. <laughs> right, you got to get down at the bar mitzvah, brother. You know what I mean? I've DJ several. I've DJ several bar mitzvahs, and they've been pretty cool. Everybody gets down. Actually, they hire people to make sure people get down. Like they got to make sure grandma gets down too. You know, grandma, grandpa. So yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I. It's been years since I've done that. So speaking of years. It's coming close to the 25th anniversary since you made your twin television debut on Real World Hawaii. So what were some of the lessons that you learned from Real World Hawaii that helped you prepare for the next chapter of your career? Uh, lessons I learned basically be myself, you know? Um, and I was just telling my um, somebody that the other day that I have to remember to be myself because that's kind of what got me to where I am today by being myself, you know? and um, and I, 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 yeah, that was the lesson that I learned is to always be myself because that got me where I need, where I am and hopefully it's going to keep me where I am. And also on the real world, I just learned how to like work with other people in a close 
knit situation, you know, because I was young, I was still 23, 24, and I was working with, I had a job or this and that, but like actually living with people and like coming in close quarters with people like that, you really have to learn how to like communicate and work with other people. So I think that's what taught me. That's what that situation taught me. But other than that, man, it just taught me to be myself. And then if I'm myself, then it's going to carry me a long way in life. And it, and it certainly has, you know, I've been tech, tech homes, tech money, Tecumseh Stanley Homes all my life. And it's been treating me really well. So my life lesson from that is just be yourself. <clears throat> if I'm, I hope I'm not rambling. Absolutely. You are your authentic self, no matter where you are, no matter if it's the challenge or no matter if it's all those TV shows I mentioned, the movies I right. mentioned. This shows you how you are your authentic self, and we thank you for that. Oh, for sure. Thank you, man. You got to be. You know, um, <clears throat> I think that's that's what's the beauty the beauty about being on the real world and road rules is you meet so many crazy, fantastic personalities. You know, whether you like the people or you don't, you get to see these fantastic personalities. And I think that's one of the big things why the real world and the road rules has been lost for such a long time. Well, not role rules anymore, but the real world and the challenge because of the personalities, you know, and you can only be yourself. And that's just what makes for good television. If you are yourself and you have a great personality, it's going to make for great television. That's my thought. A absolutely. Absolutely. So what have been some of the challenges that you face continue to be in the entertainment industry? Because a lot of uh, several people that I've spoken with over the years, they said they were a little pigeonholed because they were in reality mm -hmm. television. So how did so how did being associated with reality television challenge you as you advance your entertainment career in the entertainment industry? And how did you overcome those obstacles? Jacob, I didn't I'm gonna keep it real, I didn't have any challenges. I feel like I came on the heels of like, you know, Heather B. She was in um a few movies. Uh uh, uh David Edwards had did a, a few movies, you know, and I was coming on the heels of those guys. And I, when I came in, because I did the work for acting. I didn't come in messing up my auditions. You know, that's the whole thing. Excuse me. If the cast and directors, producers, if they see you as a real thespian or a real actor or someone that's just not being themselves when it's not called for, then you'll get in the rooms. I didn't have any problems getting in the rooms. I didn't have any problems like booking. My only problem is staying motivated. You know, I'm kind of like, a, I'm, a, I'm an aloof Aquarius, you know, so sometimes I could be really on and then sometimes I can be really off. And that's my only biggest challenge is, is like staying motivated, staying on you know what i mean putting my head down and like just staying in the game sometimes i could be out sometimes my head could be out of the game so that's my biggest challenge but other than that man it's been all love the cast and directors the directors the actors everybody's they, they show us so much love especially in the early days man i was, I was having so much love getting so much love for so many people i've never had a, a real challenge with it and that's incredible to hear and i'm so grateful that you had that experience of, be, of being of having that not overcome not being able to stay under those roadblocks and yeah 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 and not to mention you've been on several iconic sets so like for example you appeared as yourself on both the Hewleys and the parkers but you right. also portrayed various <clears throat> characters on several classic tv shows and films such as friends ncis and national lampoon lampoons van wilder so what were some of the similarities and differences between all those experiences uh uh, they were all learning experiences. That's the similarity. They were all learning experiences. You know, I was young, green, really learning how to get my chops. Um, I was so nervous on on Friends. I could actually hate watching that because I was I was chilling until like everybody, like my my manager, my agents, and everybody was like made it such a big deal. I actually kind of hate that scene. To me, I feel like I feel like when I watch it, I feel like I I know that I'm nervous. So to me, it comes off nervous. That's just who I you know, just me. But um. Other than that, man, I was appreciative and grateful for the Hughleys and Parkers to give actually write a uh, a part for me. You know, that was great. Um, I learned a lot when I did Van Wilder. I watched Ryan and just saw how of, how much of a professional he was. Um, and it's also learning from Katie Holmes when I you know watched her. You, you know, just watching how professional they are. So when it's my turn to be in that position, I'll be the same way. So I just take all everything I've done so far as a learning experience. And which led me to being on set, which led me to actually uh, producing a show called Laugh Mouth Laugh Tracks on True TV. And uh, I actually produced my first show uh, that ended in 2019. So from that, I learned what the business, what to take from the business and how the business is run. And then when I got my opportunity to become a producer, I took it and ran with it. And that's all from being on the other sets that were so iconic, as you said. 
And that's incredible that you took that experience to go into the producing role. So is there, was there, was there a change that you did, a change you did going from in front of the camera to behind the camera? No, what, what I, people don't understand is when I was actually applying for the, the real world in 1999, I had already done a, a film and, and I say a student film, but it was an actual real film uh, that I shot in college. So while I was in Hawaii, I was actually like looking at dailies from my film in Hawaii that they sent me. So being on uh, the production side is, comes easy to me because that's where I started. You know, <clears throat> I started out in mass communications when I was in college and when I was in college, I was doing all kinds of stuff from uh, small projects, small directing, small projects. And actually, hold on, let me say this. The way I got on the real world was because I produced a tape and my tape was found by Jason and uh, 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 Jason Cornwell. And once he's uh, found my tape, that I put together, he submitted it to the to the production, right? So I was already doing production to get on the real world because I produced my original tape, if that makes sense. You know, and the way my tape was, it wasn't just me sitting in front of the camera saying, hey, this is what I want to do. I actually had a like a, it was like a, 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 a tape of me, like it seemed like I was already on the real world. And so, like I said, coming from college, going to the real world, I was already doing production. So it was an easy transition. Absolutely. And I also have done, I also, we're both, we're both brought mass communication, but I emphasize was broadcasting journalism. So right. I did a lot of, I did three years on student meet on C sports Mac with the student publications. And I also interned about the ABC and NBC affiliates in Denver and also Fox four in Kansas city. So I, and I even did some crew work when X factor visited both Kansas city and Denver. So I definitely, nice. I definitely have that love for both being in front and behind the camera. Right, I do too. It's it's all being creative, you know. It's it's it's, it's just about it's just about do you want your ego to shine or do you want your work to shine? And when I say do you want your ego to shine, that's being in front of the camera. That's all ego, you know. But your work is like putting together something and like say if I wrote a script or something, do I have to star in it or can I put someone else in the starring position? You know what I mean? And by that. Do I want to just have my work shine by putting someone else in the starting position or do I want my work and my ego to shine by putting myself in the starting position? So it's all it's all it's all work, whether or not you want to be in front or behind the camera. It's all being creative. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's taken me 12 years to do to do this, to start. I started jakesnashick.com, my first blog back in 2011, and now we're up uh -huh. to 12 years in August. Nice. Congratulations, bro. Yeah, Thanks. congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. And it's always when I've done my interviews, no matter if it's a rising star regarding music, re rising recording artist versus a content creator versus someone who's been on a reality television and more recently more actors and producers, I mm -hmm. always want them to shine no matter if they're on my blog or on my podcast. Right. Well, you, uh, you have an actual platform for them to shine. So that's of course, that's what you want to do. And then by them shining, it makes you shine as well. It's just a it's a reciprocation thing, you know? It's like two mirrors, like two mirrors reflecting the sun at each other. You know what I mean? You shine, I shine. You shine, I shine. <laughs> Absolutely. And you also shine as well. In addition to producing and also starring, acting, you also hosted Direct Effect and Cartoon Network's Hole in the Wall as well. So hosting's amazing. I love hosting. Yes, yes. That's... um. I think that's one of my favorite. I like hosting because like you can do it and you don't have to like, like it's creative, it's quick. You have to be quick. And you also have to just have know how to have a good rapport with the audience. And that's what I like. I like having a good rapport with the audience. I like talking back. I like getting the feedback from the audience. And then when you're on television doing hosting, it's just, I mean, I think I'm good at it. You know, I look good, you know, got a good smile. I, I pattern myself after all the, all the best hosts, you know, so I actually enjoy hosting a lot. Same with me. I do a lot of re I do a lot of research on my with watching old clips of some of my favorite talk show hosts and to ever do it. So I definitely do a lot of saying. I got to say, you are one of the most. I love. You're so stylish. It's one. Of my, it's not even funny. If you see guys who go to my Instagram and go to Tex Instagram, he <laughs> has some amazing suits, including a red velvet jacket that I was so in awe of when he came to Thanks. Kansas City. Thank you. And you say I'm stylish as I have on the black. It's crazy. I have on just this black T-shirt and I feel so like icky right now. I'm like, Ugh, I keep adjusting it because I'm like, ah, I didn't even think about I had an interview today, but I appreciate you, man. But not today. I don't feel stylish today. I feel a little regular. But hey, 
it is what it is. But thank you for the compliments. Yes, go check my. And out. also, I got. And also, gotta say, cool glasses. You're no matter if you're dressed, you're dressing that, but also or or approaching stylish, stylish glasses, Jace. You are the definition of cool tech. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it, Jake. I'm gonna hire you, man. I'm gonna hire you as my PR guy. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. So anyway, let's get back to our conversation. So back in so. Back a couple of years ago, near the end of the twenty twenty, the end of twenty tens, Mark Long created an ins, a, ins, a Twitter social media campaign called "Bring Back the We Want OGs," and that evolved. It, by not just myself, but other people like Scott Yeager and Challenge Mania and other alums of all, and it put fire and evolved into the Challenge All Stars, which is a spinoff on Paramount Plus. So, what brought you back? from the challenge world after more near almost 20 years uh, uh, you know time they, they, <clears throat> excuse me they say timing is everything and that's true you know timing is everything i was uh sitting at the house um i was working a little bit i was doing production i was doing like a few uh 80 jobs here and there whenever they were calling me but uh the phone rang and i was literally you know like well, what am i doing why would i say no you know why would i say no there's no reason for me to say no so they called me it was the right time and i said no and I went and had a, an, an almost good time. <laughs> Absolutely. And I got to say, Tech, thank you so much for coming back. Oh, I, because a lot, because that's the thing is because I'm a, just to let you know, everyone know I'm a newbie when it comes to the challenge world. I came in when Paulie and Dave Vaughn were in. So okay. I and Natalie were in. So I came in, I'm from the big, the big brother people bought me in. Those people like Jay and everyone else on Survivor and stuff. But however, I stayed for, by watching the All-Stars and seeing everything, I am in awe of all the OGs and all the incredible stories. I'd like to hear about John Brennan, who visited the podcast, and also Dan Walsh, who also visited. It's I totally respect all of you that paved the way for so many people. And, doesn't, and it feels like that, in all honesty, that some of the challenge members that are on the show now are not don't even know how to do that or don't even know where you guys, how you guys build up that show. Yeah, it's, we talked about this, so it's a difference. So, uh, for the older ones, we have social media. We we were the social media, you know what I mean. So our focus is on more like the game and like the formula was different. You know what I mean. We were the social media, so every are we were focused on the game or like inside uh, relationships or inside drama. You know what I mean. Now, I think the people are more focused on the outside of it. You know what I mean? How many people do I have after this? You know what I'm saying? I have to look extra good and stuff. So it's just a different level of competition or different level of players nowadays. I mean, everything changes. But I, if you follow me, like I said before, we were the social media. Now people want to just have a social media following. So the the way they're playing is different. You know what I mean? It's just a different mind minds right now. Mindset, mind state, one of those things. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. It's definitely it's definitely changed. So now, in addition to your television work, you're also a stand-up comedian. So how long does it take you to create a set? Uh it's funny you said I have to write a new set now. So um it does if I sat down and wrote like I have notes, so I have uh I have notes, right? So in my notes I have uh I have 2022 jokes, I have 2017 jokes, I have 2019 jokes. So what I have to do is I would take whatever joke that I haven't told before and just start crafting a new set. It's probably take me about, mm, to get it down, it would take me about a month. To write it, it would probably take me a day or two. Cause I have, I have enough jokes right now, I just have to write out the bits, you know? But to get the bits right, working it out like three nights a week for about a month to like really almost memorize it you know i would have a good 30 i can say i have a good 30 minutes in 30 days let's say that yeah that's a good amount of jokes like i've heard a lot like one of my heroes joan rivers had a huge pile of jokes that yeah. she had a huge i can still see the huge the huge uh thing folder of jokes and a huge closet of jokes it's like alphabetical i'm like I cannot do that, that kind of stuff. I'm organized, but not that organized. Yeah, there was that, there was a guy, uh, Orny, Orny, um, Orny. Uh, oh man, he was in this documentary. Uh, Orny, I should know it. Uh, anyway, he, this guy, he's 
like that too. He had a whole just whole his house is just full of jokes. You know what I mean? Like he's like, I can pull a joke about this, I can pull up a joke about 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 that. So as a writer, it's good to have an arsenal of jokes that you can just pull from, you know. So like if I if I was hosting and someone was talking about you know, a bar mitzvah, I, you know, I would have a bar mitzvah joke or if someone was talking about Joan Rivers, I would have a, a Joan Rivers joke. Who knows? You know what I mean? So it's good to have an arsenal of jokes. But yeah, I can have 30. I can have a 30 minute set in 30 days. That's cool. Uh, do you have a particular comedy club that you like or like is there like, OK, I have a signature comedy club in Los Angeles. I have a signature comedy club in Denver or Las Vegas. Do you have or do it's you like fun. going to different places? So it's funny. So here's the thing with me. I do this to stay fresh for hosting. You know, um, I just recently uh, told myself that I'm going to go on the road because I'm like, um, it's crazy. I'm more of a practice guy than I am a game guy. And, and, I, and all my friends is like, what are you doing? Like, I just want to, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I'm always practicing, but I need to start being in the game more. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. You know, I do do a lot of shows, but I should be doing more shows. But what I do is I do a lot of like hole in the wall, hole in the wall spots just to get my timing right, just to get everything right. Because I just want to be so good that when I do do a major club that it's like, okay, we're hiring tech back again. We're going to hire him for something, you know? So my thing is I have a whole bunch of just hole in the wall spots that I do two times, three times a week, you know, one by my house in Reseda. I got one in like um, uh, East LA. So I just go and just do some hole in the wall spots, but I, I'm going to start getting on the road more, Jacob, and actually knocking off these comedy clubs. I think that's a great idea because I love going to comedy clubs, and it's rare that I like when I was in New York, I went to Caroline's a lot. So right. I remember seeing Leslie Jones and Colin Jost and and Tracy Morgan seeing those right. shows when I'm there before they before they moved over to the Upper East Upper East Side. Right, right. And I'm the guy that when I do go, I'm like, now I'm like, I'm just so much in my head. I'm always in my head. I'm like, I'm a weirdo. I'm in my head. I'm the guy now that I feel like when I do hit Caroline's, I would be able to knock that shit out. You know what I mean? And that's why I stay practicing so much so that if I do show up somewhere, I'm be able to knock it out. And go, wow, he was really, really good. Surprising the shit out of me. You know, that's what I want for people. I want to, I want to surprise you. I only want you to think like, oh, uh, tech's doing, oh, whoa, whoa. You know, they don't know I've been doing it for a while because I don't talk about it. I just do it just to stay sharp. Absolutely. Have uh, you also been considering festivals as well? Or are you just, or are you like waiting for that to be later? Waiting for that to be later. I want to get on the road. I'm going to get on the road. Um, I open for a few people, a uh, few big names. So I'm just ready to get on the road myself or go on the road with one of those guys. I got a few comedy mentors that are really, really established in the game. And I've been talking to a few of them. So hopefully I can get on the road one day when they have a, a space for me. That's incredible. I love having mentorships. They're incredible. I got to give it besides Scott. I need to give another mentor out. Josh Skinner. He's been a, he and I have known each other for oh, since 2011. So over 12 years. So I love having a mentor. So what are some of the lessons that your comedy mentors have taught you to help you grow your, in your craft? Right, right, right. Uh, right, right, right. And get out the house. Marlon Wayans name drop, name drop. Marlon was like, man, you better write and get out the house, man. What, what, are, you, what are you doing in the house? Ain't nothing, ain't nothing happening in the house. Get out the house. You know, so like, write and get out, get out, get out, and get out. You know what I mean? So um, that's one of my guys. Marlon and Sean and Marlon, man, they take they take me, both take me under their, under, under their wings. So uh, shout out to Sean and shout out to Marlon Wayans. They both take me under their wings. Let me open for them and like actually just give me game of like, Bro, if you ain't out, if you ain't writing, what are you doing? You know, if you ain't out of sight, out of mind, and if you're not writing, then you're not really doing anything. So that's that's some of the advice that I've got. Awesome. So let's talk, because I know we touched upon this earlier. Let's talk about social media. Have you thought of a plot? Like, what are your favorite platforms that you like connecting with fans on? Oh, man, I, I, after MySpace, I gave up on social media. <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> 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 I, was I remember talking, those days. So I was just talking to uh, someone about this. Like, I'm really, um, basically because it's like actual friends and family, you know? I can see what my cousins are doing, you know? I can see what my old classmates are doing. I can catch up, you know, with my friends or, or, or their daughter is selling uh, Girl Scout cookies. Or, you know, my, my friend's son, he hit the game winning home run in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the game. You know, I like stuff like that. I like feel good, cheesy stuff like that. And then I watch Instagram, you know, I like looking at the girls' asses on Instagram, you know. <laughs> it's a lot of TNA on Instagram, you know. Oh, yeah. 
not really on Twitter, but there's nudity on Twitter. So if I was to go on Twitter, I would like Twitter for the nudity. But I don't really go on Twitter. And then um, I go on TikTok when someone sends it to me. So I go on I go on Facebook for my family. I go on Instagram for the pictures of the hot chicks. And that's pretty much it. You know, I'm not really a social media guy. As you see, I don't follow anybody. I'm like, I'm not, it's a, it's a little too much for me. It's, I like just being able to like post stuff, but I don't like all the other interact. I'm, for, here's, the, here's the thing, Jacob. I'm not really an interactive type of person. You know what I mean? Like I'm a, I'm a selective, um, I'm not, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an introverted extrovert, if that makes sense. You know? Mm -hmm. So like all the, all the interaction and all stuff, I don't want to do that. I just, it's just not me. And I know people say you have to do it, but I just don't want to. So I choose to like interact on Facebook with my old classmates and other than that, I'm good. I'm cool. I totally understand it. Like for me, I always do like, even to people that I don't follow who I admire, I always leave like a nice comment to like Bob, Bobby Bones or if there's anybody from the challenge world like Jordan or Paul or Carl I said, or Turbo, I send a little bit of a positive note to them or anything. Uh -huh. So it's like, like even though I follow them and they sometimes they follow me, I always send them like, I always send people like, positive stuff or something like that because there's too much negativity and toxicity there is in there is there is and if you and i'm more of a um i'm not a more of a if you're more if you inbox me it's like you know back in the day when someone would send you a um a letter a, a fan letter or whatever you would write back so now i feel like if someone inboxes me it's almost like a not a fan letter but you know what i mean it's more personal i feel like it's more personal when you inbox me so i try to like if you inbox me i try to respond back at least once you know just say hey whatever if it's something positive even if it's something you know negative or whatever if you got disagreement i might hit you back and say something but if you inbox me i'll hit you back for sure yeah and guys this is how we got connected it's because of this inboxing there you go yep 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 oh and, and another thing and another thing another thing um as an artist um there's this thing called cryptonesia and that's when you take an idea that you've heard before and you think that it's yours or it's an original idea. And as an artist, um, if I follow too many people or if I see too much information, I don't want to take something that's not original and put it in my set or something like that. You know what I mean? I want to be as original as I can. So I don't want everything coming at me from all angles. You know, I want to have no ideas original, but I want the idea to really come from my own thoughts. You know what I mean? Not to, because I've seen it from somewhere. And that's another reason why I don't follow anybody. And here's the thing. That's almost the same thing when I do my podcast with my guests, because I'm worried about writing the same, the same questions that Scott and Derek write or with Paige of most likely too, or my friend, Jill with mm -hmm. Dylan or mm -hmm. Mike Lewis, my friends, mm -hmm. I am scared about copying my friends. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's called cryptonesia. Look it up, man. And, and, and it's, and it's not, and it's not intentional or anything like that. It's just, like you said, you'll 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 get something in your in your in your subconscious and you'll put it out there and be like, ah oh, shit, you know, that that was someone else asked that question. So we as artists, we want to be as original as we can. So I know I definitely want to be as original as I can. Again, there's no original idea under the sun, but I don't wanna hear an idea and steal from it. You know, I wanna I wanna if I'm gonna steal, I'm gonna steal from someone back in the sixties and the seventies. I'm stealing from like Red Fox or like, you know, Richard Pryor or something like that. I'm not gonna steal from you know, uh, uh, Jamie Foxx or something like that. You know, it's too, it's too, it's too, 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 too current. You know, absolutely, absolutely. And here's the thing: what sets my podcast apart from other podcasters is I don't. When it comes to the challenge, I don't go in depth. I rather talk about I talk about your careers and go in inside, like, and talk about your careers and everything. Because Scott and Paige, Dylan, Mike, they do a fabulous job covering the challenge right. i know about covering about what goes outside after the challenger after you've been on the show and what right. and, and how your life grows and that sets me apart from other podcasters you got to have your own angle man you got to have your own angle jake you do brother i Thank like you, that Zach. i appreciate it so sure. are there any dream projects that you want to tackle uh i mean yeah sure if i can be in a movie with eddie murphy co-star along with eddie murphy you know that'd be great <laughs> Uh, if, there, if I can one, if I can one day become the next Indiana Jones, that'd be great, you know. Because here's the thing, I, I like. I feel like the challenge sets you up, sets me, will set me up to be like an Indiana Jones, you know. I can see me swinging from vines, going from building to building, doing some some stuff off in the Mayan ruins in the jungle, just because you know that's kind of what we do. So 
I've been getting kind of like a, a, a itch to be have a you know to be like the black Indiana Jones or not even the black one. Have make me up a you know uh, uh, Chicago uh, uh, Williams or something like that. Indiana Jones, I'll be Chicago. I'll be no, I'll be an Illinois Williams. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I can definitely see I can definitely see you and Eddie Murphy do that, and I could also see you be the Chicago Chicago Williams. Yes, you know, so <laughs> as long as there's not a seat, a hulking named CT that can that does that specializes in taking down people in hall brawls, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, fine. Well, you know what? He can take me. Look, look we'll have him start in the movie. He'll take me down. He, he might beat me at once, but the hero has to win. So I'll win at the end. You know what I mean? He might win the war, but I'll win the. I might win the battle, but I'll win the war. You know. <laughs> absolutely absolutely so we got to start winding down our conversation so if you had a chance to meet because i know a lot of people who listen to this are like getting ready to send in their last minute audition tapes to america's got talent or to survivor or to big brother or to are you the one or the voice if you have the opportunity to meet with someone who that wants to get their start in reality television and they know their passion want to advance their career what advice would you share with them yeah, it goes back to our earlier conversation. Callback is just to be yourself because you never know what a producer, director, casting director is looking for. You know, we 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 think we might know, but we have no idea what they're discussing behind closed doors. You know, they might you might be like, ah, oh, I'm I'm a schizophrenic, alcoholic, uh, homeless, whatever. They like, and and you never know. They were like, can we find a schizophrenic, homeless? Asian person that we can put on the show, you know what I mean? And like that might be you. <laughs> you know what I mean? You might just be what they're looking for. So you might think you're too conservative, but they might want a conservative, you know, Southern Baptist preacher's daughter. And that just might be you. So don't try to be something you're not because you never know what they're looking or casting for. Absolutely, absolutely. Last question, are you ready? Sure. Okay. So when you where can my audience connect with you on social media, but also where as when you get ready for this tour, when can you where can they find out where you're going to be playing at? Oh, just I'm everywhere at Tech Homes. T E C K H O L M E S. Tech Homes everywhere. And then um except except TikTok. I don't have a TikTok if someone took it. I'm not on there anyway. But some some little white kid has my TikTok. If I can get that name, I might start posting. But some little white dude is like 12 years old, has my name, Tech Homes on TikTok. But anyway, um probably Facebook. Instagram, Twitter, they're all connected. When I post, usually one place, it goes everywhere. So it's just Tech Homes. And then you can find out if I'm touring, if and when I'm touring, um, if I have any movies that are out right now. As a matter of fact, uh, go to Tubi and check out Adam and Eve, starring Brian Hooks, co-starring myself. Um, you see that on Tubi. Mm, and um, other than that, I think that's about it. Yeah. Awesome, Tech. So guys, have you missed an episode of the Jake's Take with Jacob Valley Show podcast? Visit our channels on Apple Podcasts, Deezer, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Podcast Addicts, Spotify, and Spreaker. It's Jake's Take with Jacob Elyashar, J-A-K-E-S-T-A-K-E with Jacob Elyashar, J-A-C-O-B-E-O-Y-A-C-H-A-R. Now, are you on social media? Because I'm on social media, too. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Once again, it's Jacob Elyashar, J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. And guys, to go to the website that started all, visit jakes-take.com for more articles, more interviews with Dan Walsh, Polly Calafuri, and also Joss Mooney and Jay Starrett and even Scott and De Scott and Paige and Mike Lewis and Dylan. All of them have visited the jakes-take.com. We're starting in August. We're celebrating year 12. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. Tech, it was such an honor and privilege to talk with you. Thank you so much to, for taking time of your schedule to talk with me today. I really appreciate it. Now I'm about to take my ass to sleep, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, have a great one, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>